Hello everyone. This video is going to be a walkthrough of sorts of the medicine section in the 2022 CPT. Um, I say walkthrough of sorts because it's going to be a little bit different than what you are likely used to from me. Um, but let's start looking at it and we will see how it differs a little bit. I'm going to turn to page 713 in the CPT. That is where we have our table of contents for the manual. And if you look at it, just glancing through, you'll see it's a huge table of contents. Um, so for this video, I would definitely recommend having some extra tabs on hand and then also check out the other tabs here in the front. There are quite a few that are going to apply to this section. Um, so like I said, we are looking at page 713 for the table of contents. And you'll notice the way that I tab it is a little bit different for this section. And that's what we're mainly going to be looking at in this video. Um, so I put my tab here at the top. And that is because there are a lot of supplementary tabs that I'm going to put in here. Um, it's just a different section. It's kind of a catch-all section of a lot of different kinds of services that don't necessarily fit in the other sections of the CPT. Um, and as we look at it, I think it'll start to make sense. Um, and then we can talk a little bit about how to answer questions on your CPC exam um, that come from this section. So if we look at our table of contents, you'll see a lot of different things, um, everything from psychiatry, biofeedback, dialysis, gastroenterology, ophthalmology, a lot of different things. Um, and it goes on and on and on, as I've said. So it might be confusing. Why is this all in the medicine section? Um, and the reason for that is, like I said, it is sort of a catch-all section, but it's what it really is, is it is a section that allows us to describe services that are um, not necessarily good fits for surgery or the other sections like anesthesia or ENM, um, but are still definite uh, services that are provided. Um, so it allows us to get some reimbursement for those kinds of things. Um, so they're gonna be a little bit less invasive generally um, or non-invasive altogether. So what does that mean? So things like psychiatry, that's gonna be generally non-invasive, right? We're not gonna be um, poking you with things, right? Not opening you up or anything like that. However, things like dialysis, that is somewhat invasive and in that we are putting a needle in you, um, but we are not going to be really performing a surgery. Um, this is also the section where you'd find things like chemotherapy. Um, you might also find behavioral health. Uh, you And you would find things like um, vaccinations and stuff like that. So that's the kind of stuff we'd be looking at in this section. Um, and as you can see, tons and tons and tons of things that we can uh, potentially use from this section. Um, but that might mean this is pretty overwhelming, right? When we're looking at everything from range of motion testing to hydration um, to counseling, things like that. So a lot of different stuff. So I wouldn't really recommend using the table of contents to code from this section, um, unless you just know specifically you are using it, but I would probably use um, the index in the back and then just get very familiar with, um, not necessarily familiar, but comfortable with putting in some supplemental tabs in this section. So that's what we're gonna look at first. Um, if we go to 727, and I'm just going to put tabs in the sections that I use most frequently. But as you're going through this, if you see, hey, a lot of questions are coming from this subsection or whatever, um, feel free to go ahead and put a tab there. So 727 is where we get psychiatry. And I'd recommend putting a tab there. And what you can also note when you're looking here is that each of these subsections, or most of them anyway, have a good little description and some guidance at the top, then this can be very, very helpful. So I would absolutely recommend reading these if you are coding from this section, particularly in your homework and your test prep. That'll give you, I mean, you have plenty of time to read through it when you might not necessarily have time on the national exam to do that. All right, then we're going to go to 732. 
which is where we have dialysis. And dialysis is probably one of the most frequently used section subsections from medicine. So I would recommend putting a tab there. Um, I put it on 733, so it's on this side. Um, and then there is a lot of guidance in this section as well. Um, Cause you just think of, of all the, the different things that we do with like um, in-stage renal disease when we're coding for that. Um, we would definitely be using dialysis in those circumstances. So that's, that falls into this section. We use it a lot. All right. On 738, if I can find it, is ophthalmology services. And this is going to be everything from like um, exams to um, computerized topography and things like that that we do on the eye. Um, and so you might see some some questions about that. And, you know, it's like I said, it's going to depend on what you find most useful, but I do find myself using this section a lot. So I would go ahead and put a tab there. And then 820, the next one I use most. And as you look through this, definitely check it out, see what things you find most useful or most interesting. There's lots of coding tips in here. These can be very, very helpful. On 816 is where we get the central nervous system tests and that has a ton of guidance, okay? Um, so if you are coding from this section, this might be very helpful. And it also does give you some guidance about um, the ENM that's gonna be used with that as well. doing health behavior assessments um, and interventions. Uh, this is probably the one I have used the most, and that is because I've worked in more social services focused environments. So that's going to be a lot of like risk assessments. Um, and this might come up particularly if you are working with in psychiatric services, um, rehab facilities, hospice, or other home health services, this can come up, um, or anything that where a patient would require a caregiver. Uh, that would, that's what, when this would come up. So I've used this section a lot, but that doesn't mean everybody does. And the next section I'm going to talk about, um, also in here, we do have codes for like um, chiropractic care. I don't love that because it's not super scientific, but we do have it and also acupuncture. Um, so if you ever do get, sometimes they'll throw in on the national exam, like a chiropractic code um, to try to kind of sneak it in there and trick you that is this a real code or not? Because chiropractic is a rather controversial field. We do actually have codes for it. There are very, very limited codes, but um, there are ways to code for chiropractic services. And on 840 is where we get um, education and training for self-management. And this is one I've also used quite a bit. And there's not a pre-made code for it or a tab for it. So I would just make one. Put it in here. Um, and this is going to be anytime we're training a patient or a group of patients um, on how to handle a specific kind of um, illness that they have, if you're talking about, and this isn't like counseling, this is going to be more like you're training how to do um, like diabetes management or something like that. So if you work in public health, you'll see these a lot. So those are the main ones, but if you look through, you'll also see we have tons of really great guidelines in here. A lot of them are going to be new because we have expanded how we do telemedicine. Um, and every year this is going to get bigger and bigger, this section, because now telemedicine is really taking off. We just have tons and tons of different things that we change every single year um, when it comes to telehealth. But um, 
a lot of different things that you will see uh, frequently, particularly if you are working in like ancillary services or home health services or anything like that. Here we do have procedures just for home health, um, but a lot of these that we've talked about would be appropriate for um, organizations that manage home health services or hospice or anything like that. Um, and that is it for this section. And then we get, we'll get into the category two codes. So it's a whole different section. Um, so really the takeaway from this is, yes, it is a catch all section in theory, but what it really is, is it is a section that allows us to reimburse, um, to get reimbursement for things that um, are not necessarily going to be a neat fit into surgery, anesthesia, radiology, or those other um, sections that we've looked at. Okay, so it's not just medicine, even though, yes, this is the medicine section, um, but it does allow us to bill for services that are legitimate, appropriate services that don't necessarily fit neatly into the other categories. Okay, um, and I would recommend going through and marking um, specific sections within or subsections within this chapter um, because it will help you navigate it a lot easier because it's a big chapter and it's not super logical the way that it's divided up. So um, if you have questions about this, please let me know and we can definitely talk more about it or do some extra videos, whatever helps you the most. All right, thank you. Bye.